I hate to break it to you, but as the usual suspects in the media elite circle the wagons to protect one of their own, this Hugh Edwards story is not going anywhere. Let me start by saying it's a cause of deep concern that this father of five is unwell and we wish him a speedy recovery. He and his family must be going through hell. And it's fantastic that he'll have the chance to address the allegations made against him. After all, the police have found no evidence of illegality. So if he hasn't broken the law, why can't we all move on as his lovely North London pals so wish that we would? Well, take a listen to this highly respected journalist at The Times newspaper, Sean O'Neill, who tweeted the following yesterday. My tuppence worth on The Sun, The BBC and The Presenter. There seems to be a suggestion in the air that journalists should only report on criminality. When I broke the Oxfam story in 2018, he writes, it was not about criminality, but serious misconduct, abuse of power and breach of trust. The abuse of power, a feature of the allegations against Edwards, may not see you go to prison, but are completely unacceptable in any workplace for any employee particularly a high-profile individual like Edwards, the face of the state broadcaster's news operation, where trust is a premium and whose wages are paid for by the taxpayer. Are BBC employees held to a higher standard? Yes, they are. Do we have more of a right to know what they get up to, particularly if it's misconduct? Yes, we do. Don't forget, former Justice Secretary Dominic Raab was hounded out of a job because of allegations he wasn't a very nice boss. Not illegal, but like the cars in a Vin Diesel movie, he was gone in 60 seconds. I don't remember these woke lovies, the well-heeled North London dwelling media establishment, screaming that he hadn't broken any laws. They didn't say anything. Many think the Hugh Edwards story is winding down and that those pursuing these allegations are running out of road. Well, far from it. Whilst the Sun newspaper, who have inexplicably decided to call a ceasefire, on reporting what is by definition a story in the national interest, this guy fronted the King's coronation and the Queen's funeral, no less. Brave journalists at the Beeb itself, it's been reported in today's Express, now have dozens of BBC journalists working on more potential Hugh Edwards stories. A slew of fresh claims, we're told, have since been made about the presenter, including two from a former and current employee of the BBC, interviewed by Newsnight. According to the news website Deadline, multiple sources have been contacted by Victoria Derbyshire, the brilliant host of that show, as Newsnight looked into rumours of alleged unwanted messages to junior staff. Many asked why complaints weren't made at the time. Well, it's me too all over again. The dynamic of these allegations is the same. Powerful male star, untouchable, presiding over a culture of fear in which to speak out risks career and or reputational consequences. Now, there's no evidence that Hugh Edwards is guilty of that, but the allegations have that flavour about them. Why did nobody at ITV speak out about Philip Schofield? Well, perhaps they feared for their job. You see, that's what unchecked power does. It gives people the ability to behave in a certain way with impunity. What this whole story has demonstrated to me is the importance of the BBC reporting its own scandals in an open and transparent way, which I've got to say they've done brilliantly. And the importance of a free press. I salute the Sun for having brought the story to light in the first place. Their only great crime was reporting two parents and their concerns about their drug addicted child, the alleged victim. A victim who I should add denies the story through expensively employed lawyers. Suggestions that next, the, the next Labour government will force newspapers to submit to a new government regulator is truly chilling. Putting politicians in charge of what information we as a public have access to, effectively muzzling the press. Do you want MPs and cabinet ministers muzzling the press? Because I don't. The reporting of these allegations must continue apace. And any alleged wrongdoing must be brought to light. After all, Hugh deserved the truth.